Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we will study the chapter number 80 of chitin, that is the parathyroid hormone, calcitonin, calcium and phosphate metabolism, vitamin D, bone and teeth. But we will skip the teeth section. In the first introductory paragraph, they are telling us that physiology of calcium phosphate metabolism, regulation of the vitamin D, parathyroid hormone and calcitonin are all closely intertwined and ECF calcium ion concentration is determined by the interplay of calcium absorption from intestine, renal excretion of calcium, bone uptake and release of the calcium and these all things are regulated by the hormones that we will study in this chapter. Now we will study about the overview of calcium and phosphate regulation in extracellular fluid and plasma. We know that we, our body has the homeostatic mechanism for the control of osmotic concentrations in the extracellular fluid. Uh, so this will be true for calcium also. Normal value of the calcium in extracellular fluid is 9.4 mg per deciliter which can be equivalent to the 2.4 millimoles of calcium per liter. Now why this precise control is essential because calcium plays a key role in many important physiological processes. Number one, contraction of the skeletal muscles. Number two, contraction of cardiac muscles. Number three, contraction of smooth muscles. Number four, in the blood clotting and number five, in the transmission of nerve impulses. If there will be the changes in the extracellular fluid concentration of the calcium, for example, if the uh, concentration will be increased above normal, it will result in the hypercalcemia that will cause the progressive depression of the central nervous system. And in opposite to this, if there will be the decrease in the calcium ion concentration, that is hypocalcemia, it will, it will cause the nervous system to become more excitable. Let's see the distribution of the calcium in our body. About 0.1% of the body calcium is in the extracellular fluid and about 1% is in the cells and its organelles. And the rest is stored in the bones. The rest will be equal to about 99% that will be in the bones. So bones are the largest reservoir for the calcium. Now if we come through the distribution of the phosphate ions in our body, then we will see that 85% of the body phosphate is stored in bones. That is less than the total concentration of the calcium in the bones. And 14-15% to 15 of the phosphate is in the cells. It means that the intracellular concentration of the phosphate ions is greater than the intracellular concentration of the calcium. Because calcium is only 1% in the cells and its organelles and then if we see the extracellular fluid concentration of the phosphate that is less than 1% we see the regulation of the phosphate concentration it is not as much regulated as the calcium ion concentration but uh, it is also regulated along with the factors that regulate the calcium because it is important for several important physiological functions. We will see the distribution of the calcium ion in the extracellular fluid about 41% of the calcium in the extracellular fluid will be bound to the protein and will be in the non-diffusible form about 9% of the calcium will be complex to the anions such as citrate ions and the phosphate ions and will be diffusible and about 50% of the remaining calcium will be the will be in the ionized form that is also diffusible this ionized calcium plays very important role this is important for most functions of the calcium in body which include the uh, fun effects on the heart nervous system and bone formation now if we see the distribution of the phosphate ions in the extracellular fluid so inorganic phosphate in plasma is present in two forms one is the hydrogen phosphate and the other is the dihydrogen phosphate the concentration of the hydrogen phosphate is about 1.05 millimole per liter and the concentration of the dihydrogen phosphate is the about 0. 0.26 millimole per liter when the total quantity of the phosphate in the extracellular fluid rises it means that quantity of each of these two types of the phosphate ions are increased uh, furthermore if we see that when the extracellular fluid pH is more acidic pH is less than 7 then there will be the increase in the H2PO4 dihydrogen phosphate ions and a decrease in the HPO4 hydrogen phosphate ions uh, similarly, if, if we see the ECF fluid is alkaline, then there will be the increase in HPO4 and decrease in H2PO4. Because it is difficult to determine chemically the exact quantities of hydrogen phosphate and dihydrogen phosphate in blood, so ordinarily the total quantity of the phosphate is expressed in terms of the milligrams of phosphate per deciliter. And the average total quantity of the inorganic phosphorus when measured by this method will be 4 milligram per deciliter. Here we will see the non-bone physiological effects of the altered calcium and phosphate concentration in the body fluid. So when the calcium or the phosphate concentration will be increased or decreased in the body fluids, what will happen? Firstly, we shall note that changing the level of the phosphate in ECF does not cause major effects, major immediate effects in the body. While decreasing or increasing the calcium ion concentration causes the extreme immediate effects. Uh, in addition, the chronic hypocalcemia or the hypophosphatemia greatly decreases the bone mineralization. But here we will study only about the body fluids, not about the bone. So we will study the hypocalcemia and its effect on the nervous system excitement and tetany. Firstly, when there will be the decreased calcium ion concentration in the extracellular fluid, it will uh, when the concentration will be about 50% less than normal. There will be the overexcitability of neurons due to the increased neuronal membrane permeability to sodium ions because sodium ion causes the depolarization. Now, when the uh, calcium ion concentration decreases to a level about 6 mg per deciliter, that is 35% below normal, then trains of the nerve impulses pass to skeletal muscles and elicit the tetanic contractions, which is also called the tetany. And then further decrease in the calcium ion concentration will result in the seizures due to increased excitability of the brain. One point to be noted here is that involuntary contractions or the tetany of the hand occurs before tetany in any other part of the body, and this tetany of hand is called the carpopedal spasm. Here you can see this. Um, type of posture will be present in the carpopedal test. 
If we see the extreme hypocalcemia effects on the body, there will be the marked dilation of the heart, changes in the cellular enzyme activities, increased membrane permeability, and there will be the impaired blood clotting. If we see the hypercalcemia, then when the calcium ion concentration in the body fluids rises above normal, that is about 10, uh, about 9.4 to 12 mg per deciliter, nervous system becomes depressed, reflex activities of the central nervous system become sluggish, and there will be the decreased QT interval in the ECG of heart, and there will be depressed contractility of muscles, and especially the muscle walls of GIT will result in the lack of appetite and constipation. Now, finally, when the calcium ion concentration rises above the 17 mg per deciliter in blood, calcium phosphate crystals are likely to precipitate throughout the body. Here we can see the summarized form of effects of hypercalcemia, depression of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system, muscular weakness, constipation, abdominal pain, peptic ulcer, lack of appetite, depressed relaxation of heart during diastole. Now we shall study about the exchange of calcium in different tissues of the body. If the daily intake of the calcium is 1000 mg per day, then about 350 mg per day will be absorbed into the extracellular fluid and this absorption will be promoted by the vitamin D. And about 250 mg per day will be secreted from extracellular fluid into the intestine by the help of the digestive juices. And then 900 mg per day will be excreted into the feces. So this was about the GIT. Now if we to come to the bone. So bone is the largest reservoir of the calcium ions. And the deposition and resorption of the bone are equal. It means the rate of the deposition of calcium ion into the bones. And the rate of the resorption of bone is equal. So uh, 500 mg per day will be uh, deposited into the bones. And about 500 mg per day will be absorbed from the bones into the extracellular fluid. By the help of the parathyroid hormone. Now if we see the renal excretion of the calcium ions. Uh, the kidneys have the mechanism for the reabsorption of about 90% of the filtered calcium each day and the excretion of about 10% of the calcium in the urine. It means that if the uh, total amount of the total uh, concentration of the calcium ions that was reaching the kidneys was 9980 then 9880 will be reabsorbed and 100 mg per day will be excreted into the urine so here is the summarized form for the renal excretion of the calcium and phosphate ions 10% of the ingested calcium is excreted in the urine that is 100 mg 90% will be reabsorbed from the kidneys and uh, from the calcium that reaches the renal tubules from ECF about 99% is reabsorbed proximal tubules and loop of Henle and early distal tubules reabsorb about 90% of the calcium and late distal tubules early collecting duct causes the reabsorption of about 10% of the calcium and this 10% is more variable and it depends on the concentration of the calcium and uh, parathyroid hormone. The phosphate excretion and reabsorption is controlled by the overflow mechanism in the kidneys that depends on the concentration of the phosphate ions in the plasma and it has a critical or the threshold value of 1 millimole per liter. It means if the phosphate concentration in the plasma is below 1 millimole per liter then all of the phosphate will be reabsorbed and if the concentration is greater than this then the reabsorption will depend upon the level of the phosphate ions in the plasma.